It's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. <laughs> I just got done with a big meeting I had with my DAR group. We went to Randolph Air Force Base and had the Aviator of the Year Awards, and it was so nice to go and do that and honor our great military people. It was just really nice. I don't even tell them I used to be in. I just sit there and applaud. And Y'all, I tell you what, though. I had one time, if I hadn't had a mask on, you'd have seen my mouth hit the floor. So those of you that were in the service or around the service, you know how strict they are on standards for dress and uniform and hair and all that. And the whole time I was in, from 20 years military and then 17 years as a civilian, a woman's hair could not extend below the bottom edge of her collar in the back. So most of the time, you know, it was up or something, but if you wore it short and you wanted to do the Princess Diana style or something like that, it couldn't go below the bottom edge of your collar. This lady who won one of the awards, there were two females who won one of the awards. She was wearing a ponytail, okay? And her ponytail, I'm not kidding you, came down to here. It hung down to the middle of her back. And when she got up, she was a captain, an officer. And when she got up to walk to go get her award, I was just like, oh, my word. <laughs> my, how times have changed. My goodness. I was talking to the chief that was there. That's an E9, top of the enlisted rank. And I, he'd been in for 27. And I said, so when did... When did they change the rules on the hair? And he's like, I don't know. And I said, well, her hair went down to her, the bottom of her butt, you know, down by her butt. And he said, no, no, no. He said, it went up here. It can't go below right here. And then I said, well, why not? And he goes, why what? I said, why can't her hair go down here? Why here? I mean, what's the deal here? What difference does it make whether it's here or she's, you know, Crystal Gale? Who cares? What's the deal? And he's like, I don't know. I didn't make the rules. <laughs> ah, times change, don't they? Well, I'm sure those old timers were like one day, they're letting women in the military. What? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Hey, let's talk about sewing and fabric and oh my gosh, you guys, I got so much going on. I'm just so excited about the things that have come in the mail. There are so many projects I'm working right now. I am a little bit late getting the Designs by Juju chicken placemat out to you guys. I have all the pieces done and I got to sew them together. So I have the, it's like four videos is what it is just to make a placemat. So the first video is about cutting the pieces in your scan and cut and doing everything you need to, to prep your fabric and get everything together. The second video is using the single needle uh, to do the embroidery. The third video is the multi-needle to do the embroidery. And then the fourth video is going to be sewing it all together and finishing. So that's quite a bit of video for some placemats. And you know, I had done, I was making a video, I can't remember what it was for, maybe for the, maybe for one of these cutie table toppers or something. I had put out part one and then I was going to put out part two a couple days later and somebody said, where's part two? I want part two. And I'm thinking, well, you couldn't have done part one yet, but so I learned my lesson. I have to put all four of them out at one time. And then I can, you know, they'll, they'll put a link across the top that you can click on and jump to that next one if you want. And then I have to list all four of them together in a playlist and da, 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 da. drama. So, okay, so I had a great day. Hubs is out uh, doing something with his buddy, I don't know, something electrical had to be repaired. So he's out and about and I thought, now's a good time to get with y'all and do a video. Let me move this frame. I got an embroidery frame around my feet. <laughs> what you find in here oh my goodness you don't belong here you belong over there 
or my embroidery goodies. So, I am so excited about chicken salad to start. Oh, okay, so project one is the chicken placemat. Oh, and somebody put a comment on Facebook. They bought the kit from Jelly Rolls to go and said, there's no way this is enough fabric. Y'all, I promise you it is. I promise you. It's just that you guys like a lot of extra fabric in case you make boo-boos, and I get that. Like, I just got more fabric from Jelly Rolls to go. I forget what for. But I show in my video when I made the placemat, instead of, like, some places will send you big, long strips of fabric because they don't want to cut little tiny pieces. That's too much trouble. But then they charge you more because you're getting all that fabric. You're paying for a lot of fabric that you don't need. And then from Jelly Rolls to Go, she's not like that. Christine packages the fabric that you need to keep the price down. So, because I'll tell you what, this, this fabric is expensive. It really is. What I recommend you do if you're not totally comfortable with that, oh, these are for the mug rugs. Yes. Here's the kit you wanted in it, oh, yep. So you can do something fun. This is great. So, oh, y'all, this bunny fabric, this is so cute. This is old Moda Easter fabric right here. It is just adorable. I absolutely love it. Isn't that just so precious? And so I got fabric to make, what is this for? This is the bunny mug rug and placemats. So see, you just get a little tiny pack of fabric to make the mug rug and the placemats for this particular kit, but that's all you need. So if you're not comfortable because you think you need more fabric in case you have a boo-boo on the scan and cut, two ways you can fix that. You can do a test on your scan and cut with scraps so that you're comfortable with how to place it and make sure it's gonna cut okay. Or you can just place it, the whole piece down, don't use your scan and cut. Just put the whole piece down over your placement line, let the tack down stitch happen, and then trim it away with embroidery scissors. You've got plenty of fabric, I promise, I promise. And you know, a lot of you want to make the kits using your own fabrics, that's perfectly fine. Somebody had made a comment that they couldn't believe people actually paid that much money for fabric to make a kit out of, you know, make a placemat. Y'all, just like I can't draw or doodle and I have to rely on robotics in order to do my long arm quilting, I can't rely on myself to pick fabrics either. You know, it's really, the struggle's real on that, you guys. You know, when you want to play with fabric and sew and have it come out super cute and be nice, and then you pick your stuff and you put it together and you get done and you go, ugh. <laughs> Dang it. And I'm not one of those people that will read a book twice. So, what I mean by that is, once I make it, if it's ugly, that's how it's staying. I'm not doing it again, okay? I just... I, there's not enough hours in the day for that for me. The kits, the pre-cut kits are not for everybody. They are for people like me, okay? I can't match clothes. I get my dress clothes. When I was in the military, that's why I joined the military, so that they would clothe me. <laughs> and now I get Stitch Fix and I let them clothe me. And you know, most of the stuff I keep, a lot of it I don't. I just don't have that ability to be able to match colors and, um, and, and that kind of thing. So kits are perfect for me. And when I walk into a quilt store, I will beeline for a kit every time because somebody got paid to put that together and I trust them. So it just takes all the stress off me, you guys. It really, really does. And I know there's a lot of you out there like that too. So we are making the chicken placemat, all of it's done. I mean, I feel like a rebel because I, you, I think in the placemat sample, they did bless our nest in yellow. And uh, I have a hole in my fabric there. Here, can you see that? See the hole? No, I sure did. I got too close with the trimmer by George, right here. See that? Now, you know, I'm gonna fix that. 
I got a piece of that fabric left and I'm just going to use some stitch witchery and I'm going to patch it from the back because it's right on that seam line and I'll just catch that in the seam and you'll never see it. We won't tell anybody, okay? So anyway, yeah, I felt like a rebel because instead of doing it in yellow, bless our nest, I did it in orange. I like it. I like it. I like it. Y'all don't worry about it. I promise if you get a kit from Jelly Rolls to go, you've got enough fabric. Just, you know, and if you're not comfy with your scan and cut, then, then just trim around the tack down line. Put your fabric over the placement line. Trim around the tack down line and it'll be fine. You'll have plenty. So, also, the 14th. Today is the 9th? Yes. Today is February 9th. On the 14th, Valentine's Day, we're starting Chicken Salad by Lori Holt. This is Chicken Salad. This is the pattern. And she's got a list of all of the chickens right here that we're going to do each one. This goes all the way through May. And... So we're going to do Hattie on the 14th, and Hattie is uh, this chicken right here. What I'm going to be doing with this is I have my Simple Shapes, and I've got a link to these. These are kind of hard to come by, but Rebs has them, so I'll put a link below. That's my link. If you wouldn't mind using it, I'd appreciate it. It kind of helps the family business so I can buy dog biscuits. So... Anyway, so she's got all the cutting that you need to do in here, and the pattern is free, and then you can get the simple shapes. Now, again, you don't have to use her cookbook fabric. You can use your own fabric. If you've got a load of Lori Holt fabric, I happen to have the fat quarter bundle, okay, because I'm going to use some of her fabric, but I'm also going to uh, use some of her shabby and solids as well to kind of give my eye a place to rest because that quilt's very busy. And I have, this is the chicken tracks. I'm all over the map, y'all. Hold on. Which, which one is this? This is, I'm trying to find the words. Farm Fresh, Farm, Riley Blake Design Pattern, Farm Girl. Oh, this is Farm Girl Vintage is what this is chicken tracks so I'm using this it looks like it's on a white not a cream so all of her fabrics have a white background in her fat quarter bundle but if you've got other Lori Holt fabrics use those you know y'all the world is your oyster use up your stash if you want but you will need your simple shape templates for your chickens I am going to trace these onto printer paper and then I'm going to run that page into the scan and cut and be able to cut out the shapes with that. And then I'm going to, so I'll cut out my shapes on my fabric. And then I'm going to use the file, the FCM file created by the scan and cut and put it into BES4s or simply applique and create an embroidery file and stitch that down. Now, in the pattern, they have got the legs and feet. They've got the legs and the feet in the pattern. Okay, let me back out a little bit on this. I will be scanning this page with the scanner in the Brother Luminaire, and then I will digitize these, and I will show you guys how to do that. If you've got a Luminaire or a Baby Lock Solaris, you can scan in these line drawings, and if they don't come up on your printer paper, just go over it with like a... I don't like to use a Sharpie because they bleed through paper, but a black Crayola marker will work great or dark blue or something like that. Just something real good that the, the scanner can pick up. And then you can take your pen, the that, what is it called, capacitive pen thing that you got with your uh, Luminaire or your Solaris and just draw on the screen. You do it in Design Center and it's going to make you the bottom of your chickens. How cool is that? Lots of fun. Lots of fun. So I'm definitely going to be doing that. Hey, you guys, I had mentioned in a video, and a lot of you signed up, and I really appreciate it. When I did the dime event for the She Shed event, we did that. It was January 27th. Maybe it was February 1st. I think it was February 1st. And that was hugely successful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, that was so much fun. 
Y'all got to get all of those cool uh, accessories I show that I use from Designs and Machine Embroidery, like the hoop mats and the magnetic hoops and the thread and all kinds of stuff and the, the placement guide, all of that stuff. You guys, wonderful. It was so successful, they want to do it again. So I'm tentatively booked for March 18th. Now, March 18th, I'm going to be in Houston at a DAR state conference. But for y'all, I'm going to come back and do it in my motorhome with my brother NQ3700D, my combo machine. So we'll do it there. Again, I'll be hosting. I won't be doing all the goodies, you know, demoing all the goodies. I'm going to leave that to the pros. But it'll be great to see you guys there again and say hi and chat with you guys. It was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. So, oh, speaking of Dime Thread, they put out a new color set. This is called Color Play Rio Collection Medley. So look at this. Aren't these beautiful? Let me show y'all. I like this exquisite thread. I really do. My brother machines love this exquisite thread. Look at this. I haven't even taken it out. Look at that. Isn't that cute? That looks like that Tropicana color. I just love it. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. So pretty. That's not really a lime. It's kind of a pistachio. That's definitely a pistachio, isn't it? And then look, a variegated. It's like a light purple, reddish, blue. Very neat. Very, very nice. So I'm going to have to put that on my exquisite thread rack. I used Designs by Jew Jews. I think it's called Simply Padded Mug Rugs number two. I got the set. Look at this. I made these mug rugs for my for door prices in my DAR group. And I put the little mug rug note in here with a little silver thing. This one's mine. I didn't take it with me. But it turned out so nice. So some I had put it on our Facebook group, the Power Tools with Thread Facebook group. And I've got daughters that watch me, and I got the design from a digitizer that lives in British Columbia. So I paid her to digitize it for me, and a lot of you have asked me for it, and y'all, it's not mine to sell. So I, DAR would not appreciate me selling their digitized uh, design. So if you are interested in that, I will put her information, the lady who does the digitizing, below in the description box and you can look her up on Facebook if you want anything digitized. She does it by hand instead of machine and her stuff is wonderful. She's very reasonable and she has a quick turnaround. So anyway, just letting you guys know that. But I want you to take a look. Y'all, you can see, and I got the idea because I was talking about doing these mug rugs that had the, the succulents on them for the uh, Designs by Juju Cactus succulent sketch, succulents it's called. And because I needed to make door prizes, I was like, oh, racking my brain. And then I saw that paper and I was like, well, duh, make a DAR mug rug. That'd be adorable. And it turned out just beautiful. I just absolutely love it. So these are great uh, for teachers, for your pastors at your church, any little gift you want to give, uh, a guild, anything like that. Y'all, you can take anything and put it on a mug rug. Make them up for uh, the guys at the fire department. I mean, whatever you want to do is fine. You know, it's just, they're great. Because nobody wants to put a ring on a table. At least, well, maybe they do. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So what else? Hey, I was on a... I went down a long rabbit hole on fabric and landed at Corey Yoder's. Corey Yoder is a fabric designer from Moda. I was on Instagram. That's what it was. I'm getting better at Instagram, you guys. And I came across this quilt pattern. I'm going to show y'all. Oh my gosh. I just stopped and stared at it and I'm like, I absolutely have to make that. Look at this. It is called Wooly Stars by Coriander Quilts by Coriander. Would you look at that? Look at those sheep. How adorable is that? Isn't it cute? I love it. While I was on the site, I found another one. I thought, well, if I'm going to pay shipping, 
let me go ahead and get another one. And I got this. This one came, Star Twist. That looks pretty easy to do for me. So I've got jelly rolls with these, because these are two and a half inch strips that are cut like that. So that's pretty cool. And then she was so sweet. She doesn't know me from Adam, y'all. She, uh, thank you, included an extra pattern for you with a smiley Corey. So Corey herself filled the order. Y'all, the pattern she included. <laughs> oh, there is no way on God's green earth I'm making that. <laughs> No way! That's a little intense for me. Are those pineapple blocks, y'all? No, they're, I don't think they are, but still. Wow! That is called droplets. That's too much. So we got Star Twist, which I really like. That's more my speed. And then even bigger, Wooly Stars. That's perfect for me. This is perfect for me. I love this. And I love the little note from Corey. So Corey Yoder, thank you. Huge fan of your fabric. I use it all the time. I've got Cozy Up on the long arm, if you're watching. I know you're not, but you never know, y'all. <laughs> so, great. This is great. i got to put these back in the little bags and keep my note from Corey Yoder because, you know, I'm a bit of a fangirl of hers. Always have loved her fabric. Always, always. I think that's about it. Oh, no! We got a Creative Notions bag. All right. So, I talked... I've been showing these bags now for over a year. You guys, if you're around, you know, if your local quilt store closed, or I, I know everybody's trying to open back up, but it's tough, right? So, and even though Creative Notions might be behind by like 30 days, I just got January's bag. So here it is. So this is a spoiler alert. If you haven't gotten your bag yet, you want to turn off the video or leave it on and turn around and listen to me while you sew or something like that, but you don't want to look. But you guys, this thing is awesome. It's awesome. I just love it. You know, just when I think you can't come up with anything better. This is wonderful. Okay. So this bag is Creative Notion Subscription January 2022, Falling in Love by Danny Moss Mogstead for Riley Blake. And we have, uh, let's see, what's in my bag? We have eight fat quarters. Would you look at these? How cute are these? Let me back up so you guys can see. Hold on. I love these with the trucks, everything. Oh my gosh. And it, it's a little reminiscent of Lori Holt's Love Notes, isn't it? But that is also made by Riley Blake, so I guess it's okay. But I just love it on the black. We have tulips on pink. We have a floral on black. We have a plaid in pink on white. X's and O's and hearts on red. Floral on white. Gosh, this is pretty. We have swirls on pink and X's and O's and hearts on black. I love it. I just love it. And y'all, since it's Riley Blake, it's soft, so pretty, very, very high quality fabric. I just absolutely love it. And of course you get a couple patterns to use this fabric. And what came with it, you can make either, this is Valentine, two and a half inch strip quilt idea. So you get this one. So there's one quilt idea that you get. And see, it's in a document protector to go in that binder that we got. Okay, so you can trim, all, you can cut up everything into two and a half inch strips. And it's got the pattern there. Also a pattern, I saw another one, where is it? Star in a square, table topper, or wall hanging. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Or we have, yeah, star in a square, table topper, or wall hanging. There it is in a different, see, you can, so this one has like the geese around the outside, 
and that one just has straight borders. So all different ideas you can make with this. I love this. We also have an Ohio Star enamel pin that is so pretty. If you guys collect these enamel pins, I love it. I will wear this to um, like on the 18th and 19th of February. Is that next weekend? What weekend is that? Yeah, weekend after next. Not this weekend, next weekend. I'll be in Brenham, Texas for a juried quilt show and I'll take my video camera. We're gonna go around, that'll be fun. I'll be wearing my little Ohio Star pin, styling, right? With all my quilting peeps. <laughs> we got an ultra sharp embroidery scissors. Got those in. Very nice. To, these got really sharp little points to get in when you need to trim from applique. We got, uh, let's see, folded corners table runner pattern, quilting shortcuts, tips and tricks, jelly roll race layout. These are all these patterns that I had shown you guys. And then we also got, look at this, folding two and a half inch strip ruler. Wow, look at this. So we got square rulers all last year, beginning of January, look at this. Oh wow, y'all, two and a half inch strip ruler. How cool. Okay, this looks like, yep, two and a half inch strip ruler. Whoop, whoop, hold on, take the packaging out. So it'll fold up and go in a Yazzie bag. How about that? And then here we got grips. These are true cut grips, I think, from Grace. That's what I think they are. They come with it. Very nice. Two and a half by 24 inch ruler. Look at that. Not bad at all. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Oh my gosh. Hey, speaking of Grace, when we were moving into this room, can you believe it's already been a year since I moved into this remodeled sewing space? When I moved into this room, there was a mishap with my frame. It got torqued and um, the, the, where they meet in the middle, it kind of got, it kind of went, uh, because we didn't take it all the way apart to move it from one room to the other. And as we were putting it back together, one end got heavy and long story short, my frame is jacked up. And as the machine travels over it, it'll, it'll hang and I'll get long stitches and I have to really pay attention to it and, and make sure I have to give it love while it goes over just that one spot. So I, uh, I called Grace and I said, Hey, I need to get some new, um, I contacted them on their customer service form. I said, I need to get new rails for this Phoenix frame. And they said, sorry, uh, stop making that in 2014 and we don't have them anymore, but we'd be happy to give you credit towards a continuum frame. So blah, 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 a whole new frame. Anyway, I emailed them back and we are in talks with getting me a new frame. And if I work it out right, I might get a whole new system with robotics. I don't know. So. We, we shall see how that goes. Now, if I do that, that is the, uh, that is going to be the QTC robotic system. I would get the QTC pro so that it has the ability to stop at an applique, jump over it and keep going just like on the quilt Butler. I don't think you can do that with the QTC essentials. If any of you have the QTC, and you like it, you have advice for me or anything, please leave a comment below and let me know or send me an email if you don't want to put it out there publicly. PowerToolsWithThreadedOutlook.com I would love to hear your opinion on that. Might get a Kinique? I don't know because that's all grace. And then again, it goes with the support and all of that that we had talked about. Oh my goodness. Oh, and y'all. <laughs> my... My last video where I had told y'all where somebody said it was cheating to use robotics. Woo, man. You guys came out of the woodwork. You were like, what? That ain't cheating. <laughs> I got the biggest 
laugh out of y'all. The comments, the emails just flowed. I mean, somebody was even like, I'd love them to come say that to my face. <laughs> I was like, man, talk about getting a quilter's dander up. Woo, buddy. Y'all are funny. Y'all are so funny. All different flavors, you guys. <laughs> See what you started? See what you started? So the robotics are their own skill set. You guys are absolutely right. It They are. They are their own skill set. And a lot of people likened it to, uh, you know, maybe they think uh, um, sewing machines are cheating instead of hand quilting. You know, you guys, times, times change. Remember, what did I say earlier at the beginning of the video? Things change. Go with the flow. And I'm Power Tools with Thread, so I'm on board with it. I'm totally on board with it. If I can get a machine... See, and my theory on this, my whole philosophy on this is there is so much beautiful fabric out there. So much that I want to play with. I want to cut it up. I want to sew it back together. I want to make pretty things. And there's just not enough hours in the day. And if I don't use machines to automate the process, good, beautiful fabric is going to pass me by or be sitting in my stash. And that is a shame. So that's how I think about it. At least that's what I tell myself. I love it. I love every bit of it. You know, using all these fancy machines that have come out, the new scanning cuts and the new scanning machines and the robotics and all of the things that are out there. I just absolutely love the technology. And I will champion it every time with no shame. No shame, you guys. I'm proud to do it. And I love learning new things. And I love showing you the new things that you can do too. You know, and a lot of you are getting to the point where you're like, I can't even run a rotary cutter anymore. So why not use the scan and cut, right? Nothing wrong with that. At least you still get to play with fabric. Totally get it. All right, you guys, that's it. We covered a lot. I got a lot of cool things in. I still haven't gotten my big old bundle from So Yeah Quilting yet. That $200 worth of fabric I know I bought. But uh, it's coming in. Oh, don't forget the jelly beans. I'm not eating the candy, you guys. Not eating the candy. I'll tell you, that scan and cut box came in, and there was a box of chocolates in there, and I just looked at it, and I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I had one piece a day for four days. That's okay. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Y'all go sell something. Bye.